Alright, you let me know when we're ready to go. <clears throat> What's cracking fools? You know who <clears throat> You ready? Try it again. Yo, what's cracking fools? You know who it is. Big bad scent rock. Which camera am I looking at? This one? I know, but I want to be in focus this time. Are they lettered? Are they all focused on me? Which one's camera A? This is A. That's A. B. For bird cap. B. C don't even see me. C, C don't. No. C is Zach. C's for scent rock. Zach. Zach's. It's going to cut to Zach's. Yeah, I don't know. It's just a new thing, I guess. It's a choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to have a live Zach, uh, re like his reactions live to everything. Wow. Yeah, a little right corner of <laughs> his facial reactions. <laughs> All right. Whoa! Yo, what's cracking fools? You know who it is. Big Bad Sand Rock back at it again. Here with another... <laughs> I can't even do it. Here with another webisode uh, for your viewing and listening pleasures. Shout out, big old shout out to all the fools that have been listening all across the world. Um, and we just got a very special guest today. <laughs> Bird cap. Mm. So, all right, let's get into this. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to be a little bit serious. I'm me too. Okay, great. <laughs> this is great. Let's get into this. Um, but first, as always, <laughs> as always. Thank you guys for listening, for watching. Uh, shout out to our sponsors. Insert sponsor here. Uh, email us at <laughs> Sam Ron Podcast. Big shout out to manscaping.com. <laughs> hey. All right. All right. If you, if you want to sponsor this podcast. <laughs> All right. We can get into this. Yo, thank you guys. Big shout out to Squarespace. For making it, to this, making it this far. So Let's sure. get into this. So our guest today is the newly transplanted mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, artist, aka Bird Cap. <laughs> Tell us something. Tell us something. <laughs> God, you got it. Your interviews are so tough. Tell um, us something. <laughs> <laughs> no, all right. <laughs> Let's just get it. Why'd you move to Chicago? Let's just start there. Let's oh, get it. I'm sorry. This is. It's a it's a good question without a, a good answer. I don't know. I COVID happened and uh, I was living in a studio apartment in Memphis for that whole year. And when Slow I was down a little bit, I'm going too fast for me. Okay, okay. <laughs> Josh, will edit all this. Be like smooth cutscenes. We, we just run it through. That's a shame. Um, <laughs> COVID was uh, a tough time. Start with something more positive. Um, <laughs> ancient Egypt exists. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. So Memphis. fast forward to now. Okay. Currently in Chicago. <laughs> right. What brought you here? Ancient Egypt. Not Memphis. Uh, bro, I don't know. It was time to move. I was, I'm 34. Mm -hmm. I turned 34 in January. And I just felt like if I was going to stay in Memphis at this point... I needed to like own land and become like a community leader. I didn't see how I was going to fit into the dynamic of how uh, how Memphis is right now. And more than anything, I think I needed a, a huge life change. Um, I was like, I was just developing bad habits, like eating bad and not working a lot and watching like way too many YouTube videos. And mm. I just thought, you know, big scene change. Last time I got in a hard place in my life, I moved to Korea, changed my life for the better. It was just an extreme mm. move. So this is a and trend so, for you. And Yeah, yeah. And so like when I get into danger zones, I think a big move mm -hmm. helps a lot. And plus, um, I needed to be around someone who was real close to me. Um, my family's been going through hard stuff and... I have a friend from high school up in Chicago who like knows me my entire life. Thank and so you. I just Thank thought you, it'd be really grounding to uh, be by y'all, <laughs> be by uh, my high school buddy. But that was it. Also, Chicago's great, man. I have a gallery up here. So many good friends up here. You have a gallery up here? 
I got a gallery up here. Yeah, I own a gallery up here. <laughs> Tell us about that. Um, it ain't much to it. Uh, Sarah over at Chicago Trueborn, mm -hmm. she like started promoting my work when like nobody cared about my work, and she's let me do a couple solo shows, and she kind of got my foot in the door in Chicago. Damn right, she let you. She did let me. She did let me. Um, she knows. She knows her golden goose. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm that. Are you sick? I'm real sick, dude. All I'm right, real sick. shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> just, I don't believe in vaccines. Um, Yo, stop. This is serious, bro. <laughs> Sorry, these Topo Chico's getting me. Okay. So, boom, 2019. Boom. You have a solo show here in Chicago. What was that like? Yeah. Um, it was cool. Um, I wasn't very proud of the work. I like, um, it was a big lesson for me in that, like, you just got to spend time in the studio every month, not just the build up to the show. Right. And I had painted it in a studio apartment, so it was in my kitchen, so the lights were different. So when <clears> I finally brought it to the gallery, mm -hmm. I was like, oh. But I told you about it then. It was like a, it was a weird moment for me because, like, the show was up and then you came through, Max Hansen came through. Mm -hmm. Imagine came through and it really felt like in my head this moment of like white mediocrity where I was like, these people shouldn't be at a show this bad. Um, but, you know, some people connected with work. It sold. It was cool. I was glad. But it definitely put me in position that next time I have a show, I want to be real proud of it and like feel like I checked all the things I could check. Yeah. <clears throat> That's interesting that you say that. Because <laughs> that's how you feel. No, I I don't even, yeah, I didn't think of it like that at all. I just figure an artist that I respect there, I respect your, your creative approach. I respect your work, you know, the way you apply your work and just the way you go about it as, as a person, your character. I respected that. And I'm pretty sure that's why other artists went to it. You know, they want to see what, you had to say whether you felt like I put months into this show or like a, a week into it. It's still coming from you. You know, it's still you saying something. Yeah. It's still a reflection of your creative side. I mean, I or think that was, person. that was the positive, right? But like, it just made me real hyper aware that I had a responsibility to that community to like, mm -hmm. um, like double check myself before I present stuff. Like if y'all gonna take a day out, I really want you to go home thinking that was a good show. Mm -hmm. And regardless of how y'all actually felt, I I took that show really hard. So I didn't like paint for like six months after that show. Um, but it's been better now. I'm painting a lot more. Um, Are you working towards a solo now? No, but I'm just- Just creating to create. Creating to try to figure out what my polish will be for that next show. So like, I'm just adding a step. So I had an idea for that show, mm -hmm. but by the time I started painting it, it was probably two months out before the show. By the last painting I painted for that show, I was like, oh, I kind of see where I want to go. Right. But then it was showtime. So like, now I'm just doubling that. Method. It's like now, I'm, now you're finding your breakthrough with what you want to do and then the show, and then you take six months off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then you got to start back over again. Right. So I just want to double that time to where like once I get to the idea where I'm like, this is how I want the finished product to look. Yeah. That's when I start the show. So I felt like I was missing an integral step back then. Yeah. It's a part of just like aging, I'm sure. You get a little bit better at your process. But yeah, I hear you. Um, let's kind of get into this part of... Because the way we met is basically through... Because there's, you know, so many artists, but me and you are... I would say kind of in a similar lane. We're kind of in the same lane or field of art or artists, maybe, would you say? Yeah, absolutely. So do you remember how we met? We met at uh, Soul Food 3, also known as Paint Memphis. You were you okay. came down and painted there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do remember. I remember that event. I don't remember meeting you. It might have been real brief. I think I messaged you on Instagram around that time just to, and I, I definitely came by your wall and yeah. told you I liked the wall. But when I got the list of artists who were coming through, through Nosy, you were the one that stuck Shout out. Shout out Nosy. Shout out Nosy. 
Um, you were the one that stuck out, so I made a point to meet you that trip. Because you were coming in from Nashville yeah. on your Off the Walls project. Where you did the right, right. The, yep. the bird yep. with the big wings, I think. Yep. Um, yeah, but that's why I met you. Yeah. But we both had like a, a sort of iconic sort of character that we were doing variations of. Mm -hmm. We both started in like a quasi graffiti world mm -hmm. and started going towards uh, like public murals and like legal work. Yeah, it seemed yeah. all around the same time. So we seemed like we were in the same part of our career when we met. Yeah, that's true. And then um, you brought me out in Memphis at the time you were living in Memphis and then you brought me out for an event or not even an event. It was like this project you were doing. Can you share with us a little bit about that project? How um, how it came to be? And then when you brought me in, where you were at with it then? Yeah, um, it's called the Moon Pie Project. It's based on, it's named after a guy named Brad Wells, who was a sort of traditional muralist. He'd paint public schools and public libraries. It was a really nice dude. He'd come and paint with us in Memphis. I think he lived in Nashville normally. Um, he passed away really suddenly. I think he was only like 50, maybe a little younger than that. But so we named it after him calling it the Moon Pie Project because when he was little, he was like the model for Moon Pie. So like if you bought like a little tin lunchbox with a kid mm -hmm. eating Moon Pies, like that was Brad uh, in the photo. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to name it after him because he traveled to paint with friends. And at that time, I was like... I didn't have a house, so I was like living in my van and more often than that living with friends, like sleeping on their couches and stuff. But I travel a ton and that's really how I got my career going. So I just go to St. Louis for two weeks, paint two walls, go to Chicago, paint a wall. Um, but that like throwing seeds out got my career going and I wanted to return the favor in Memphis, but I didn't have a home. So I worked with a group called Crosstown Arts where they offered to house my friends and then they'd paint a wall for like a week and give them a little bit of money. It wasn't much. It wasn't what like their normal price would be. But it was just a way to give back and like, like y'all help me out in Chicago. Here's your trip to Memphis to sort of pay for it. Um, and so, yeah, we brought you out and it was still early on in the, the project. So we weren't saving the walls yet. Um, okay. And, you know, we were trying to- I remember to that trip because, sorry to interrupt. I mean, you brought me out and we're supposed to work on a collaboration mural. Oh yeah, we did. And I've never collaborated with anybody it was like prior to that. Or I never collaborated with another artist that I didn't get, like I didn't know from, you know, from the jump. So I was like, all right, I gotta collab with this guy. We didn't work on any sketches prior. No. We just showed up and we're like, all right, what are you gonna do? What I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do? And uh, we just went for it. It was like freestyle kind of? But it's kind of freestyle, which is either a great thing or a horrible thing or a disaster, for somebody yeah. you don't know. <laughs> so I was just like, we're trying to figure it out. And if you know me, sometimes I get kind of frustrated easy. If I don't like, if it ain't registering to me, I'm like, all right, what are we doing here? Like, yeah. But the wall, we we finished the wall, and to me, it came out super dope. It came out smooth. It was like. It was the first collab of two people, and you can always tell it's the first collab because it's very, like, isolated Insert moments. Here. Yeah. Mm. And so we did every other character on a flat red background. Right. But that red correlated to other things in the interior space, like the mm. neon stairs. So it just worked, and it was supposed to ride for six months. It rode for four years. Oh, damn. Um, we, we were supposed to change that out biannually. Yeah. And they were so happy with that piece. That uh, now it's, I think, twice a decade it changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then another, another artist came and went over mine, so. Went over I don't like that guy. Who was that guy? I don't want to say his name. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he did his thing. It came out dope. Uh, mm -hmm. I would have been mad if it, was, if it wasn't dope. That was a fun so piece. So that's though. when we met. We did our thing. You had me paint a couple walls. We got to chill. And then after that, I think we just kind of kept in touch very loosely maybe here and there aggressively yeah yeah you were definitely more aggressive <laughs> DMing me I was like who is this guy Boy, I, I just wanted my paycheck and I wanted to bounce these shirts always sold out I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to buy these shirts and then and then uh, and then what was after that we met I'm um, trying to build a timeline here 
I don't even know. I know shortly after that, we did the Tampa. We did Tampa, yeah. That was the next big project we did. And we brought yeah, in yeah. Natasha. Yeah, shout out um, Lily Poor. Yeah, that was a real fun, weird time. We got to stay in a fancy hotel. You bought overalls. Mm -hmm. That's the main highlight. How about head. overalls and some Cortezes for our opening show in Tampa? You did. It yep. was lit, bro. That's when I learned about Cortezes. Yeah. What? Never heard. From Mississippi, bro. I ain't heard of shoes. <laughs> 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 what? what? <laughs> All right, let's get into the nitty gritty, bro. The real deep stuff. All right, so right now, in your career, you got a lot of stuff in the works. Yeah or no? No. Okay. No. Next question, <laughs> <laughs> bro. Why are you? You're in your show right now. <laughs> You, uh, you turned into a like, uh, Ninja Turtle. You know, I'm a shy guy. You're not a shy guy. I'm a shy guy when cameras are on, for sure. All right, um, well, you're, I'm working on your work is my shy. grief manual. You have a lot of murals in a lot of places. Yeah, that's true. You got murals coming up. You got no. festivals that you're in. No. Yes, you do. That I'm we're helping in. coordinate. Yeah. Black Can Wall we talk festival. about that or no? Yeah, yeah. Which is a festival that you're in. So I want to get into this because you've done more festivals than anybody that I know personally on a, on a, like I can text you. I don't have that many friends in, in the art world. Okay. So as a, as a friend, you've done more festivals than anybody that I know and probably more than anybody listening to our podcast. So you want to uh, maybe break down some of that of like the ins and outs, the highs, lows, any advice? Um, festivals can be a lot of fun. I, I've really... And then, and then we'll get into the one you're helping organize. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, the first festival I was ever really in was one called Crush Walls out in Colorado, in Denver. How was that experience? Like being invited? Um, I wasn't invited for the first two years. Uh, the first year I, um, had a private commission. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. That just reminds me of the time... Uh, when people talk about Art Basel and we're like, yeah, I'm going to Art Basel this year. Oh my God, you're doing Miami Art Basel? And you're just like, in the back of our head, we know that just nobody invited us. We're just, on a hotel. Yeah. Yeah. we're just showing up and like yeah. painting random yeah. free walls. Yeah. Paying a lot of money in Miami. Like, yeah, I'm going, I'm well, going to Art Basel well. this year. Yeah. Oh my God, my, my friend, he's going to Art Basel. Yeah. So that's, what, that's how it is, right? At the yeah. beginning. That was absolutely. That's how, how it, it reminds me of. So, all right. So, crush walls, Colorado um, crush walls, which I'm, is still happening. I knew the connect in Memphis for Red Bull at the time. And so when I was in Denver, I was like, hey, can you put me in touch mm -hmm. with the Red Bull connect out here? And so I talked to them and they were like, I know the guy putting on crush walls. I can get you in a room with him. And so I went in and showed him my work. And he was like, we, we've got no money. I've got a big mm -hmm. wall you can take if you want. Yeah. And so I went out and painted it, paid for my own paint. Um, but met a lot of people, mm. got to know a few folks. The next year came and uh, I kept hitting them up and they were like, well, I don't know, we don't know. They were real hush. And finally one person like uh, got me into it and got me a good wall, but I wasn't on the official lineup the second year. Yeah. Um, and by the third year, I knew enough people that they started inviting me out. I ended up going like six, seven years straight. Um, it was great. I, the difference between my career before those festivals and after um, was a big change, especially when I finally did a powwow, I did powwow DC. Um, but even that was super random. So I saw powwow DC liked one of my murals on Instagram. And yeah. so like I hit him up with like my hat in my hand and was like, thank you, sir. Um, if you ever need a mural. Thank you for gracing my Instagram uh, with your like. Yeah, yeah, because I like love... Especially at that age, that, that many years ago. And for those Pow that know, was Pow like, is yeah one of the original and biggest and first yeah. street and at that art time, festivals. Their curation was so high quality, mm -hmm. so it was like artists that I really looked up to, like right. Curiad and Nozego and Woes and Lolo, and all these like people who paint so much better than me. So for them to look at my work, I was like, oh, maybe I could like. Yeah. And um, they. In, eventually invited me out and when i was talking to them they're like we didn't like your work by the way it was like a, oh my god it was a robot like they they hired some company to like 
automatically like things, right. hashtag mural, mm -hmm. just to get their presence out. But had I known that, I wouldn't have had the confidence to reach out to them. They right. told you um, that? That yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'm which I, I'm cynical from the jump. Anybody, anytime anybody likes anything, I'm like, nah, you just want me to notice you. No, <laughs> I will not notice you. That's why I don't like any of your posts, man. <laughs> oh, Burke, I'm trying to get noticed again. <laughs> <laughs> Writing a paragraph on this shit. Um, yeah, man. But I will say that's how Mural Festivals worked out for me. Was mm. that I was, um, I was willing to go like take the hit and just paint. I didn't, I didn't ask for anything like payment when I first started or uh, a lift. I was on like some scabby so ladders. Let me shit. stop. Let me stop you there. And then we'll jump back into it. But right now, you know, amongst artists, it's we always advocate to get paid. Like Absolutely. don't do work for free. Absolutely. But you did this project for free, and it sounds like it worked out for you. And do you advocate for that in the future to like younger artists? You gotta pick your, you gotta pick your poisons, right? Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't work for companies that I don't want to be a part of for free ever. Like if a if a hotel or a restaurant hits me up, mm -hmm. if I don't want that food, if I don't want like free housing in that place, there's no reason for me to work for for free. At that right. time in my career, I wanted more than anything to feel like I belonged in the art scene belonged in a specific art scene. Like, it was so crazy for me at that moment in my life to meet like these people I really looked up to, that that was worth it for me. I'm not saying it is worth it, mm -hmm. but if I'm being honest with myself, right? yeah, painting and having my name listed with someone like Woes was like a big deal for me. Cause it like, cause I had doubts I could be an artist mm -hmm. and seeing that printed on a poster, like it was dumb, but it meant a lot to me at that time. Right. Um, I definitely think you got to choose your own path. I try not to get mad at young people when they don't think about the money, but you got to think about like what benefits are you getting from it? If it's exposure in like a local town and a local neighborhood, is it worth it? Mm -hmm. Like, honestly, what I could charge changed after uh, Pow Wow DC for sure. Yeah. And like the people who were contacting me for jobs changed. So it happened to be worth it that time. Is it I worth like it every time? feel like that's something that you can put on your resume or what do you call it for artists? Your CV? Uh, CV. Um, you feel like you put that in your CV and be like, look at, I've done these festivals. I'm also, in this. Like, do you feel like there's like a, you talking about these other artists before you, do you feel like there's like a certain class or a tier? A tier? Yeah, I think like unconsciously a lot of people do that for sure. I hmm. think I even like internally I did that. So like, yeah, it was one thing if I was painting with like my friends from high school. It's another thing if I'm painting with like you and and Natasha. It like it feels like, um, right. like an upgrade. And I'm not saying that's right, but it is how I feel. Like somewhere inside of me. Yeah. And now I'm you know a hundred years old, and that means less to me. But at a certain age, it meant the world because. Yeah, the so you want to be in that same weight class. I, yeah, like when I started, all I wanted was like graffiti kids to not think my character was dumb yeah. or to not think like I didn't understand graffiti. Mm -hmm. And so I'd go do like dumb shit with them and like do illegal walls. You deserve to be in that. But I just all I wanted to do was impress them. Mm -hmm. And I think at some point your goal not paying finances does help you get through the hardest times because you're not going to get finances for a bit. So just wanted to fit in with graffiti kids. Then I just wanted to fit in with like great muralists. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you know, th those bridges helped me get to a place where I could like confidently charge enough to where I can pay rent. Right. But I couldn't for years. And I think focusing on that kept me optimistic through the tougher times, you know. Do do you think? What do you think the direction of like street art festivals or mural festivals are going? Like it um, seems like it's like now you know for a while it was like every city, every town was having one, and yeah. everybody was like, and it seemed that too like a lot of these mural festivals were like, hey, come do this, be a part of this festival. You don't get no money really, right? But you know, not to say that there aren't festivals that pay really well, yeah. 
but it seemed like everyone was kind say, of jumping on that. Crush Walls always paid me. Not the first yeah. two years when I wasn't like on the list, but as soon as I got on the list, they paid well. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of good ones that pay. Uh, shout out to and Lansing. They, they take care stacks, of us. They took care of us. Um, I think, like with any sort of scene, it has to mutate. So right now, graffiti went mainstream. It started franchising. Mm-hmm. These street art scenes were really cool, made a really cool community. But communities are um, like delicate, right? And the more people that want to go in it, the more it dilutes. Right. And so like any like cultural phenomenon, like it sort of has a ripeness and then it starts to rot a little and you have to figure out the next step. I think we're in that moment of like the festivals they're not going to be what they used to be. Right. Like, and it's because it's like, it's blown open. The door is blown open and like. Now you have like all these mural agencies and everyone's trying to. Yeah. There's a lot of middle. Capitalize there's on more it. people who go into investing in a mural festival with the idea of like real estate values mm-hmm. and like, mm-hmm. like surge pricing for two weeks in the city. And that's going to dilute you know, that excitement that you had when you're doing it because it's not from the community. A cool thing about, like, those initial festivals, they were made by graffiti kids who just right. wanted to, like, force a, their voice into a By the artist, for the artist. And then however that change and mutates, so that's one thing, but the seed was from the scene. I think... That doesn't man, happen as I much. I think that's so important because when you have somebody of your own who lives off of that culture, like... You're going to pay your rent or not pay your rent off of the culture, off of what you create with your art, you know? So for that, you know, let's say, um, what's the dude, the founder of uh, Pow Wow? What's Jasper Johns. Jasper, Jasper Johns. Wong. Jasper Johns, a pop artist. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Apologies. So, like, he understands that, you know what I mean? If the, if the entire market is screwed up, he knows that's going to affect him also, you know? Right, and I right, think that's right. important. For a lot of like uh, the one we did in Lansing, mm-hmm. like uh, Jose and uh, what's bro's Dustin. name and Dustin, they're both artists and they're both live, you know, and breathe that culture, the creative culture. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's important, you know, for for if you're gonna be a part of this for a ticket, like, all right, do you come from this? Do you live off that same table? Like, do you eat off that yeah. table? I think it's important. I think it's real important too. Also, the way they treat the artists is very reflective of how they care about the scene. Like, uh, Powell famously doesn't pay artists, um, mm-hmm. which a lot of people have a lot of clap back on, which I get. But you don't lose a dime. You have more spray paint than you've ever had in your life. You have usually a better wall than any festival right. normally gets. You get flown out. You get a nice hotel, free mm-hmm. food every day. It You almost don't, like, if you've got that space in your schedule and you're making rent, it's not such a negative for me to go to a power. Well, a lot but of like a artists, lot of festivals, you pay for your own rent. You I mean your hotel, you pay for your own lift. Not a lot. There are festivals out there like that. The, the all like all those Miami festivals are like ridiculous okay, that's like different. that. Miami's different. <laughs> <laughs> Miami's a different situation to yeah, itself. But I would just never do that. Um well I think all right, let's go back to Powell. To now. Back to yeah. Powell when they started curating these artists, these artists who they curated were in a place that they didn't really need to get paid off every project. Like right. they can go bless a community because they knew their value was... You right, Zach? Sorry. <laughs> Take your shirt off, bro. <laughs> it's already off. So, you know, like these artists were in a place where like they knew the value that they were giving back to that community as opposed to the opposite. I feel like now a lot of people are trying to build a platform off of the mural, the right. mural like branding, you know? I think so. Sorry, he just ruined my train of thought. <laughs> exactly. My bad. Oh, man, that's crazy. Hey, shout out to everybody that's listening right now. It's crazy, Zach. This is like anything that was like in my way could have been in my way. It felt like. But. Well, what do you have to say for that, Zach? Why are you eating pistachios right now? It's just, you guys are so in that world, and I'm like, it's so over my I head. Feel, yeah, we're like, we're like I'm just like, having this weird, like, nerding out moment right now <laughs> like a lot of those kind of festival festivals and stuff um i'm not too familiar with yeah. at all yeah yeah, um, yeah yeah but it's interesting seeing how 
kind of vulture. It's almost like these mural festivals are almost like uh like Lollapalooza. Like you have like Lollapalooza, Lollapalooza is like powwow, and then you get like these other little music festivals of that are smaller music festivals. Yeah, they're having it this year. Oh, yeah. okay. I All just right. watched uh, Lightfoot's uh, video she put out. <laughs> She's super excited for it. But yeah, so like, there's like, <laughs> there's, there's like, <laughs> that's my mate. All right, back to it. As you were saying, ancient Egypt. No, but I think there's like music festivals and. <laughs> Like shoot art festivals, like mural festivals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to be on those lineups is kind of like saying, like, all right, these are the leaders that mm. are that people want to see. These are people that are doing dope work. So when you do get on one of those lineups, it's like, oh, dope. Like, like you're saying when you got to be put on uh, Crush Walls, right. it was like a little notch in your belt. Like, oh, I made it. Like I'm kind of doing. It definitely my thing. felt like a a plateau, right? Like yeah. you had reached a little section. It was like no matter if my career stops today, I made it to this thing it was a marker at that point yeah. now mural festivals are so multiplicitous there's so many mm. going on at the time well, it means less to be in one because right. it's like there's one happening every week mm -hmm. and also the curation has changed whereas like when it first started off you get the best eight muralists in the world and that'd be the lineup but if you do it for 12 years straight you can't have them come back every year right and like the work changes and like, actually there's any trigger on me so you should have been in <laughs> multiple i said i've said that every time i've been at a power i've put your name and nosy's name uh in it wait, wait um, you you recommend other artists while you're there? i don't know if you're supposed to but i do oh, like man. i feel like that's the like I, they just had a beautiful festival in hawaii recently and i was uh -huh. like oh i wish i would have been there but like if if it was me curating that festival uh -huh. you know who would be in that festival your friends all my friends yeah and so i like nepotism is annoying and it can be real like extremely bad on like high up jobs and like socially but i do understand it because if i ever get in a place of power Mm. Like the best person yeah. from the job might not get it because like <laughs> Cinerox going to get it, Nosey's yeah, yeah. going to get it, not you, but maybe Josh, <laughs> Sardine. I get it. Yeah, I get it. yeah, yeah. You'll yeah. get the I following year. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put me on there anyways. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No. I would put you on first. Come on. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's we just took like a super deep dive into stuff that nobody we'll make cares him, about. We'll make them talk about it like two times speed. <laughs> yeah. we'll just do chipmunk voices for All right, so anyways, no, I mean, we're going to get in. Though. It is very interesting. Nobody cares. We don't care. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> nobody cares. So barbecue. <laughs> so these, they're also like the new museums. How, you know, when you're young, you're like, I want to be in this museum. Now it's like, there's a lot of museums. Whether you're in it or not, like it, I feel like it does give you a certain like gemstone for your like you know your vest. But yeah. it's not. It's like Tinkerbell though. You gotta believe in it for it to exist, right? Right. Like, exactly. Exactly. I, like people tell me about a museum they got in this week, and I'm like, oh, cool. But I have no relationship to museums at this point. Mm -hmm. You know what? And so it, it for means me? nothing to me. It killed it for me is once you find out who's the curators and you find out who's the person sitting behind that desk. That is not meritocracy. It's like much more like And then you like you meet these people and you're like, oh, you're the person who gets to de decide the fate of my career. Does, like, does that's it, so stupid. I'm going to do what I want. Does like, it feel a little bit of like Wizard of Oz of seeing like seeing behind oh, the Oh, for sure. Because like, this wait, one person went to like school yeah. and they just they're like they had the key. And it's like, yo, who cares? Like, you, you think know. that it's an objective meritocracy? Anything you think you put in enough work, it's gonna go up, and that's true to certain extents. But like, the gatekeepers of everything, malicious or not, mm -hmm. like they have, they're they're flawed humans with their own confirmation biases, right? Right. Um, like Nosy met the main, the head of the largest blog on American graffiti mm -hmm. in the world. Like, it's a a magazine graffiti.org or something something like that <laughs> dot um, net or but something. when he met him the dude was like the dude obviously lied about having a graffiti pass you know oh how people God. act and you yeah. just know and then he was like i don't post nothing if it's not straight letter if i can't read it so like just what? stylistically knows he was never going to get on that side he's been trying to get on that side since he was 13 yeah. but knows style is like this tennessee style kind of looks like a 
like Venom from Marvel is like a symbiote attacking. Sick. It's a cool stout, but it will never make it on that site simply from aesthetic. And for 10 years, he was trying to get on that site. And then just casually at a bar in LA, you found out he will never be on that site. Yeah. That's, that's, um, that's how learn, everything like, is. You learn yeah. that like, oh, this is the person behind the curtain that I was hoping, you know, gave me that pass one day. Of, and then you learn like, oh, I just got to take my career and build your career and you, your body of work how you want to see it. Because that's all that really matters, you does, know. Does that kind of experience um, ever defeat? you guys are people or does it like motivate you to like oh no I, okay i've really got to just i think the younger thing. artists like the, the younger me is definitely like ah oh, like that sucks like that was my main goal is to be in this art museum or my main goal was to be in this festival mm -hmm. and now that i'm older it's like you know it's like all right well what's my goal now you know or what's my ambition that i'm striving for now mm -hmm. right i think honestly as long as you keep your goal when I started, all I wanted to do was impress my friends who, who were doing like graffiti. Um, and if you keep your goal always wanting to impress your friends, wanting to impress the people you know and the people you understand how they think, you'll never be disappointed with the work you pull off or their reaction. But impressing strangers, there's just so many <laughs> algorithms to it. There's, you have no idea what's going to happen. But, like, find the people who, like, you find characteristics you want to assimilate and you want to, like, imitate and try to impress them. And that will always leave you, like, satisfied with what you're doing and what your goals are. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like, most of my friends are artists and I'm constantly just trying to, like... Uh, I told you this you before, like, but if you, you get, like, you 20... Feel like it's a lottery to be... A successful artist sometimes. Absolutely. Like, you feel like, oh, you won this lottery to yeah. be that one. I feel like everything is a lottery. There's so many good yeah. artists. Like, who decides who gets to be, like, the top of this, like... And trends change so fast. You know, I look at, like, illustrators from the 90s, and this shit looks so 90s. And you're like, I'd never buy that. I like but, some of it. I feel like a lot of that's coming back. Oh, well, it's cool. coming back, but there's yeah, a time yeah. when it's not back. Mm -hmm. And you're like, that ain't cool. <laughs> and I think about that every week. It's well, like, it comes back. One day someone's like, gonna look at my shit and be like, that's real 2005. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. We're definitely getting to that point where we're like trying to master our 2010 style. And then we wake up and it's like, oh, it's 2021. And I'm still yeah, trying to yeah, master yeah. the style. I've been striving but I see the OGs like that who are like great at what they do, but yeah. their shit is like, it doesn't correlate to like the buying market. Well, uh, at one point, do you live and die by your style? I think we've dived pretty deep into that live or die by it. Um, you know, when I see all the kids coming out with no lines on their illustrations, I'm like, oh, I'm fucked. I love, I love that stuff, man. <laughs> no, I like it, too. I love no lines. I like it, too. And I'm like, but I've, I put so much Some time it in feels a little like It feels a little like, like graphic design -y, like tech world silicon valley it does look like an easy mural like, too you like, know right. the lines are the hardest if you spray paint in graphic if shit you do that style shout out to you tiny lines are like that's the flex and yeah. if you don't have to do that oh that's annoying yeah because you want them to have to do the hard part <laughs> even if, if it anybody doesn't look has better. any questions please hit up Instagram at birdcap. I had imagine 876. Yeah, oh, DM him. Not that's me. That's my real Instagram. Handle. All right. Well, we're going to the last question, bro. Oh, no. You're helping organize a mural festival. Now we just shit it on all the music fest. I mean, all the mural <laughs> festivals. So you're currently working on one. Tell us about oh, it. Oh, I'm not shitting on them. I just think the, the, I was the vibe bit, is changing I didn't because of the people that are doing it there's so many out cool. and there's just so been many out for so long yet. yeah i don't even want to talk negative about the people doing it but once you have the the fucked up thing about a mural festival that made it cool is it seemed like so rare and exclusive mm. and hard to get and once you make it less that which is good i think it's better more people should be like yeah. invited to things it just waters down like that moment too what do you think it can oh, it's pretty saturated evolve into uh well i think society is changing right i think in general when i started public art there was a naivety that like 
you could put wild stuff on a wall and it was like this moment for like self-expression and like you were just um less people talked about public art and so there was less parameters and like thoughts behind it now that it's becoming saturated and it's coming at a time of like like really like social like revolution the conversations are becoming more and more real and like how does this work like reflect the neighborhood and why are you the person expressing yourself on that wall and like do we want that on this wall like it's become a more complicated question of like what you put as a mural and I think that complicates something like a mural fest where you suddenly bomb a neighborhood with 16 <laughs> out of town ideas. Like it doesn't sound good anymore. Where like, I think at least for me, there was a naivety to it 10 years ago where I was like, that's such a cool idea. And now it's like, that seems aggressive. Do you, do you think you think like that because of you just being older and just having a different perspective on Quite it? Quite possibly. Um, but also I do feel like there were just, there was, for whatever reason, there were less muralists, there were less paid murals, there was less like large scale public spray murals like 10 years ago. Um, now there's an economy behind like the scene that Sinarak and I are in. And so that instigates a lot of stuff. Where's this money going? Why is it going there? Um, why are these people like getting to be micro celebrities on Instagram? Like what are they doing for the building that they painted it on? Yeah. What are they doing for the people Huh. Um, and those aren't easy to answer questions. Mm -hmm. So I think mural festivals have a real, like, they need to think about themselves a lot. They're in a weird metamorphosis period. Mm. Uh, which brings us, we are starting a mural festival. Real quick. I just realized, are we the two old bitter guys now? I'm not bitter. Um, we're not bitter. Okay, we're not bitter. <laughs> I mean, I <laughs> Yeah, we are. <laughs> All, right. All right, now let's get into what you're doing right now. I'm excited um, to hear about this and this learn is, about it. And I'm just helping. Um, but so Sydney James, Max Sensing, and Thomas Evans um, got together and they started. Thomas Evans. Also known as Detour, Detour 303 from Denver. They're starting a mural festival called Blackout Walls, which will be the, uh, one of the first fully black curated uh mural festivals of its kind it's going to have 17 artists um brown and black artists coming to detroit at the end of july um like brown i'm just helping a little bit of a little sprinkle i'll be on a pepper. bicycle bringing <laughs> waters to folk but uh <laughs> it should be a lot it should be a lot of fun and um you know, Sydney James is really like the mastermind behind it. She's gotten so much funding. She's gotten the wall set up. She's been running 80 miles per hour yeah. since I ever started. So big shout out to Sydney. Um, but it's exciting. It's it's like we were saying about the early festivals. It's a festival that started by the mural scene. Mm -hmm. Not only that, it started by like uh, it started by like black muralists who have been to many festivals where they find that they're like absolutely isolated at these festivals. That's why so, I so, love. So. That's why I love this because Fubu. She's been through it. Yeah, Fubu. She's been through it. <laughs> she's been through it, and she recognized how she wants to see it better, and she put herself in a position of power to do that. Yeah, which is amazing. So they all had the same thing in common. They go out to these festivals and they have a good time, but they had one, they're the one person who's not white or Asian uh, or like there's one more. And it's just this very like, you know, lonely experience in a certain way. So they wanted one where it doesn't feel like that. They can invite brown people in and they're not gonna be isolated. They're not gonna be like tokenized and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I can't think of anyone better to put it on than Sydney. She's been to so many large, uh, well-known festivals. She's painted all across the world. Um, so I'm real excited to see it to come to fruition. I painted a mural with her in Nepal. Mm. And before that, she painted in West Africa, I think. But she's like... She's dope, man. She's she dope. has so much experience with these sort of projects. As an artist, but just as a person. You can just feel like the energy that she's she brings to energy. the table. Yeah, yeah. She's real energy. But yeah, that's late July, so that's the next big project coming up. 
as the, do you feel it. like you're being tokenized? No. As the, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it's real hard to tokenize me. <laughs> Talk to our, our so red bearded. So fucking many of us. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, it, nah, and cool. if I so, am, I'll take that hit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It'll be all right. Yeah, that's love, bro. I'll walk it off. <laughs> <laughs> all right, dope. And um, I'm going to try to go out for that. Is it in July or June? You should know you're coming. July? You're a we'll painter. be out there. <laughs> Wanna go, Zach? Me I'm and down. Zach. Can yeah, we take the podcast? You could bring the podcast. To I'll get you a tent. Ooh. Yeah. Like a little you camper ready? tent. Like, fit two of you. Listeners <laughs> and viewers, if you want us to small. go to Detroit and podcast live, who can we interview? Sydney? You think she'll Sydney? Mark is out there. Mark. Max. Max. Uh, Sneha. Sneha. I don't know if I should Detour. be naming the people or not. Detour okay. is too late. I already started. Nobody listens to this, bro. Oh, uh, it's cool. <laughs> but Sydney will Say listen to Say everything you want. Hi, Sydney. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Uh, Ajana will be out there. Backpack. Backpack? Tylon Williams. Tons of Detroit mm. artists. Super good. Uh, Backpack Durden. Mm. Sydney's Apprentice, who now oh, okay. full grown. Dope. Um, a lot of good artists will be coming out. Ghostbeard. He'll be the token... You know what's crazy is that you try to throw a, a mural festival in Memphis, mm -hmm. and the city basically redlined you to death. It was pretty or bad. Red taped you. I'm red, stressed out. Word? Red line, red tape. Red line. It's, they just put all this red stuff on me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then they 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 like they, they promised a mural, lot of dude. walls. And then it came out that they hadn't actually gotten. And he had all these the heavy, heavy hitters. What? He had all these heavy hitters. I had crazy names coming out. They I had set like, you up. They set me up for some embarrassment. That's, I had uh, that's wild. I had Sin Rock coming out. I had Woes. I had Jose Mertz. I had uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nozego with I think Curiot was coming out with him. It was it was it was, it was too good to be true. Yeah, it turned out to be the case. It was uh, when they were like, "Hey, we ain't got no walls, but you want to paint on some." Uh, crates. Oh, yeah. They took all his walls away. And like, oh, we have these like shipping containers. That was it. Yeah, shipping container. I was like, all right, let me get this off my chest real quick. Side note: Sometimes I think I'm killing it as an artist. Like, yo, I'm like, my trajectory is crazy. I'm about to skyrocket <laughs> to yeah. the moon. Yeah, and then like my emails are super dry, and then I finally <laughs> get one. Like, like you know, the headlines. We really want to work with you, Miro Project. Blah blah blah. And I'm like. All right, here it is. Here we go. Big project. Buying a house. Babe, I got the bills paid for the rest of the year. Here we go. <laughs> I open up the email and it's Buy like... Buy the good baloney. Yeah, and then I open it up and it's like... <laughs> and it's like, yo, volunteer. We got these um, trash cans if you want to paint. Like, you and 50 other artists. We have a budget of 100 bucks. They need to be sending that. I don't see why they don't send that to like... You know, I forward that to... Um, send it to Bill <laughs> Gates. Send it to rich folks who right. need to give back. It's I don't like, know why when you draw a cartoon, they're like, yeah. My, my ego stable. is so offended, bro. I'm just like, the audacity that you would think I would do this. You should send an invoice for the time that you Yeah, I'm going to send an invoice. Email. The scene is so saturated, <laughs> and the the market knows that. And yeah. they know I that know, but trash they, cans, if they shotgun pepper those emails mm. out, you might not take it. I might not take it. But they'll, they'll find What's enough people to do it. What's worse is when they have you submit a design. Put, feel free to... Submit your proposal design. It's I, like I'd what? you're out of your mind. For I'm like willing. Well, or, like nice or for like a mural. Like yeah. I don't like anyone who sends me a message Even that talks to mural, like yeah. a job is a prize mm -hmm. to win. It's like man, I have a whole career. <laughs> I pro like I do. It's real. But they yeah. like talking to me. You know, like I how your aunt talks bills, to you with art money. <laughs> like my mom would used to be like, "Oh, I'm glad you did that. When are you gonna teach?" Like, that's how those emails feel. It's like, you don't believe it? And they're like, no, we don't believe it. <laughs> you want to paint a trash can? <laughs> Send us four designs by Friday. It'll be $300 if you get it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Send us four designs if you are the selected artist. Yeah, I don't, $300. Anything that's, like, excited to offer me a chance to submit to something, I don't reply to it. Yeah. I don't reply to most, like, I don't know. I'm going to probably starve to death. But yeah. I, I'll That's I'll the only emails I'm getting anymore too. The after COVID, shit's been so dry. It's been rough. Your artists do selling. not submit to these. This boycott. This is a PSA. Boycott all <laughs> those emails that you get that are like, 
Submit your designs, blah, blah, blah. Also, boycott it so then they could pay us. Are there people, do you think that there's artists that are like jump to that kind oh, of Oh, for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. That was me, I know you know, five years ago. That's the problem is like, Can't I don't want to yell at them too much because I was young and desperate. Yeah. yeah. And like $300 meant yeah, more to me back then. Yeah. And I was right. like, go crazy. Well, wasn't for it. About, it was about the money, but also just about like being busy with your art. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Just having some image to send back to mom to right. be like, I'm not dead. <laughs> okay. There's two things. If you're at a certain level in your career, you shouldn't be painting. Trash cans. And walls. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have your assistants paint all your walls, beginning to finish. No, trash cans and bathrooms. Bathrooms? Yeah, you bathrooms. just get sprayed out in a bathroom. I recently got an email to do a bathroom. And I was like, dude, that's cool, but I, no, I'm not I don't want people's phone numbers on my mirror. I want my art in yeah. the museum. You Very know. good call. Call, call, draw like Val Vic. Yeah, just drawing like a penis Looking next to your character. Time. Yeah, I want that on a public street. An <laughs> uncircumcised penis <laughs> next to your character. I've never seen an uncircumcised one in the bathroom or in real life. Big baller limper. Sorry, Cut this Girl. out, please. <laughs> that cut? You're going to have a... Uh, Patreon. Patreon. All right, if you want to hear more of this content... <laughs> Sign up to our Patreon. <laughs> and Zach does the pod shirtless. Ooh. Um, <laughs> I think I think I think I think we're done. <laughs> Unless you want something else to say. I felt like I said nothing. I really wish I had said something. I know. Well, we didn't really get into your like upbringing. No, not at all. Yeah. I'm from the south. He's from the south. South. If you can't tell. I feel so, like, yeah. All circumcised down there. Southern boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're definitely done. Thank you guys for listening. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely <laughs> If you made it this far, thank you <laughs> for sticking with me. The real fans. Yeah, you're the real fans. <laughs> Man, I apologize. I'm not good on camera. I get nervous. You need I, a solid intro, dude. I know. That's why you should really work on yours. All right, ready? <laughs> Well, you're not even going to edit it. Why do you care? <laughs> Stop acting like you care about the quality. Hi. I'm Michael Joseph Roy from Escatawa, Mississippi. I went to Magnolia Junior High uh, from 7th to 9th grade. Um... I like DC, but I've been reading Marvel more often uh, lately because of uh, timeline events. Captain America comics drag. Um, and I'm in Pilsen with my buddy, Joseph Perez. Tune in tonight to see more. It's for being a friend. Travel down this road and back again. Your heart is true.